Hey, it's Amanda, and you are watching a segment from 100 Videos in 100 Days. This started out as a challenge to myself to prove that freedom can come from authenticity and vulnerability, and that life doesn't have to be perfect or look perfect, it doesn't have to feel perfect to be valuable. really be valuable and that you don't have to wait to share your gifts till it all looks a certain way and this is also about what the cost is of waiting to share your gifts um, I didn't have a YouTube channel before this I never did a video of myself I didn't like to see myself in camera so am I scared every time I do this yes but I'm here I'm showing up because I'm committed to this conversation about freedom. And the freer I get, I believe the freer you will get. So I invite you to participate as you can. There's no editing here. I get one take. So if it all goes to hell, you go with me. <laughs> there may be swearing, there may be crying. I may get up and walk around. That's just, it's the game. It's authentic and vulnerable. I mean, I will look different every day. So, that's really the point of it is in life there's no editing, there's no redos. So who are you gonna be? How are you gonna show up? What, what would that look like? And what would, be, what would be possible if you just showed up exactly as you were and let the cards fall? Would that be freeing? It is to me. And if it is to you, I hope you get something out of these. If there's anything that I say that rubs you wrong or feels off, discard it immediately. It's not for you. It's for whoever needs it, and most likely for me. So when this turns off and the next one turns on, I will be sitting here quietly with my eyes closed. You're not walking into any special session that you're not supposed to see. Everything's transparent here. So I just, I started this to have context in the beginning because I can see people are jumping in the middle of the series and I just want to make sure everyone feels included. So I will see you soon. Looks like I'm wearing the same shirt from yesterday. I am. <laughs> I slept in it. I was working and I watched the show, fell asleep. I was writing and then my brain right before I did this was like, oh my gosh, change your shirt. So you'll like me. I will never be together enough or something such as having a new outfit every day. Unless someone else is dressing me, that's not probably ever gonna happen. And I just want to be who I am. And if you don't like me because I have the same shirt on two days in a row, probably we're not meant to be friends. I was writing, or I was going to write, and I started something called a clearing sheet before I started. And what clearing is, it's really a whole video, but in short, it's emptying your mind before you go somewhere, before you talk, before you connect with somebody, because the mind has all the chatter going on. So you could show up for a meeting that you 
need to be out or might even want to be out, but your mind will still be at home with what didn't get done or the traffic or what time you need to leave. And so if you just empty those things out first, it's uh, much easier to be present. So you would have someone listen to you for, for a minute or two, and all they're going to do is get what you're saying. They're not there to judge it, not to have an opinion about it, not to say, oh, yeah, or oh, nothing. Just accept it and then if you want to exchange that and I've done that a lot before I've gone to do something scary or important or I'll call someone and I'll clear with them and just say oh I'm pissed I'm freaked out my mind is all over the place I feel ugly I have a zit I haven't gone to the bathroom in three days my hair is gross I think I'm cool it really doesn't matter like it's just just dumping that so I went to to do it just kind of as an experiment before I wrote and I probably just say it out loud I've been doing that but I decided to just type it because I thought it just might be interesting like I said I'm constantly researching everything so I'd like to study it and see if I could use it as an example or a way to teach people or I don't know just an opening for something I constantly experiment on myself I think I just typed for probably a half hour straight. In fact, my eyes were closed half the time. I felt like I was going to fall asleep, and it just kept going. Stop, start, this, that. Let's kill, let's save, let's have peace. I'm going to run, I'm going to freak out. This is stupid, stop watching me. I mean, it's pages. And I, it didn't matter what it was. I just let it. I'm a car. Okay. And it felt like it was going through cycles. Like it would get really angry. And then all of a sudden it was like, I'm peace. I'm everything. It's okay. I'm done. I'm done. And then it was almost like it would sit and watch me. And then I was just waiting. And then it would come up like, Oh, now I'm pissed again because I just kept letting it be, whatever it was. And it's hard because there's that part of you that wants to go, gosh, look, it's calming down. It's being peaceful. So maybe that means if I did this all the time, it would just finally come to terms with everything and be quiet and go away. Maybe. Felt a lot of compassion for that, this mind of mine. Because it seems to be wrestling with something. Really just more like it's that it doesn't have an, an existence of its own. It doesn't get to be out here playing like, like how we look, I guess. And then I was really tired when I was done typing and I laid on the couch for a minute and I could just see how it feels strange because part of me has a lot of compassion for it and then part of me is like, and you cannot participate because it's like one of those people that they're, they're running on autopilot in a space from a lot of pain and a lot of hurt, confusion, and maybe they start manipulating and hurting people. They don't mean to do it. I don't believe anybody ever meant to hurt anyone. You will never convince me of that. I think there's confusion in the mind. But because we're dealing with confused minds, it's hard because I'm a softie and I want to just love it. And part of me can't. And then part of me feels like, and if I just really try and involve it back in everything, then it's going to think that it can start running the show again. It's like it doesn't, it doesn't have boundaries. It doesn't know how to just do its job, just to help me function and remember things and learn things. It gets confused about its jobs and what it, it's like a little kid that wants to drive and it's, it it's can't, it can't make those kind of judgments, but it wants to. And then it gets really mad. And that's what it felt like just watching a teenage girl just have a fit. 
and I've watched my mind do that many times. It's just, it gets confusing when I think it's me. And I was literally like, felt like, you know, a secretary just typing dialogue for my boss. Like, okay, that's interesting. But I could definitely tell that it was just running and I could watch it. I think it's a good practice because it's easier to separate that that's not me. I mean, it says weirdo stuff. I also think it says the things that all humans think. If I have a hard time believing that no one's ever thought of killing someone. No one's ever thought about weird, creepy, inappropriate things. Like, it's not you thinking it. It just comes through, and then we, we judge ourselves. Like, oh my gosh, I thought that. I feel so guilty. Oh, I feel weird. I feel creepy. It, did you think it, or did you get thought? Because I don't think you were sitting on your couch and all of a sudden had this really weird scene go through your head and you, and you intentionally, like, you know what, I want to think about something that will freak me out. Yeah. And we don't do that. We get thought. And then there's the more presence we have and the more practice we have, we can, you know, we can't stop a wave from coming in, but we can learn to swim with the wave or sink below the water and watch because there's a lot of junk on the surface and it can get very tumultuous up there but if we can sink and be grateful for what it does offer and let it just do its thing and let it be I feel like it would be a better operating system because going to war with your mind you lose Trying to ignore it doesn't work. That's like ignoring a, t a toddler that's screaming while you're on the phone. And the thing that comes up for me is about being, like granting being. It's the one thing that's the biggest gift you can give anyone is when they're hurting or in pain is not trying to shut it down and fix it. It's just granting them the being to be exactly as they are. Because that's what we want. I mean, lots of times we want people to fix us. We just want them present for us so that it can work itself out and then we can reconnect. Because what we want the most is connection. And we get that by granting each other being. There's not a resistance between the two of us. A few, oh, several years ago, my kids were in, my girls were in cheerleading and my sister's girls were in cheerleading. We were at this convention in Long Beach. My nephew Johnny, he's 10 now, but he is absolutely one of my best friends. I mean, I'll text him if I want to talk. We're that close. <clears throat> and I think he's 40 in his soul, and I'm like 12 in mine, so we get along well. I mean, we can talk for days. It's, and he's at a very high level of conversation. Well however many years ago, that maybe five years ago, that wasn't the case. I mean, he was five years old and I'm an annoying aunt that likes to come up and hug and kiss on you and he's got this beautiful brown skin that's super soft and I always rub my arms on him because I tell him he should have to share the wealth of the brown skin with the ghost lady. So I'm, I'm annoying and he gotten scolded by his dad so his mom was holding him, and or maybe he was sitting between us. And he was playing a little game or doing something. Anyway, I turned to him, said one of the obnoxious things to do, like, hey, Johnny, I love you, or whatever. And he said, I hate you. One, he was upset that he was in trouble, and I'm annoying. So his mom grabbed him up and said, Johnny, don't say that. And whereas I could have gone with a hurt feeling, I could have gone with whatever story, reaction my mom would have come up with. <laughs> One of the things I'm most grateful for is that I had the presence to give him being 
and what I said to him was, Do you know why I like you? You tell the truth. Thank you for telling me how you feel about me because it's scary to tell people how you feel. And my sister kind of looked at me like, I, if we granted each other being, it, it stops the resistance and then the real soul can come forward. But when we just resist immediately, there's just an energetic force field right there. And we don't know why we can't talk to people. It's like, because they can't even grant themselves being. Like, I feel awkward about them. Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. What do I say? Shut it down, shut it down. Ugh. So the conversation is, I feel awkward. And I would like to have a conversation. Oh, you, I do too. Just owning that in the moment opens everything up. So what does my nephew do? He's on his little phone, playing a game. He's staring straight ahead. Of course, I've said this bizarre thing. And he starts to lean towards me to let me see his game. He leans over more, starts to scoot away out of my sister's arms into, my, into the seat between us. Have you ever played this game? Nope. Tell me all about it. And then shortly after we had to go down on the floor because it's the part where you cheer or your girls go on stage. Who has hold of my hand? My nephew. Who's high-fiving me? Who's checking where I am to make sure we're still on the same level? And we've never lost it. Someone can love you enough in those moments to just grant you being without judgment. That doesn't mean a repetitive process of letting someone beat the crap out of you. That's not the same thing. If you're letting someone beat the crap out of you, you want something from them. You want something out of this situation. Or you want something for yourself. There's just something else going on. There's a payoff in there somewhere. You may not have discovered it yet. It's not a conscious thing, but that's what's happening. And it's what I very much find with kids and teens is I just... Granting them being is all they want. It's all all of us want. Anyone that comes here is welcome to be how they are. It's an agenda for them. Agenda is exhausting. Show up for me this way so I can show up this way. That's freedom. Vulnerable is, let's both show up how we are and see how it goes. I'm willing to give it a shot. It doesn't mean you'll be best friends. It doesn't mean you'll be soulmates. Some people, I'll have those dialogues with, we have a great conversation, and we never talk again. And there's nothing weird about it. It's just done. So I guess that's what I see about the mind, is just granting it being. If it's going to freak, it's going to freak. Today I was cleaning up downstairs, and it was so much going through, and I literally heard a voice. Okay, these are always the same voice. I'm not hearing different people. But maybe you've ever had this happen. It was like, could you tell him to be quiet? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to calm down. I just, he's so noisy. They're talking about the same thing. But the, they're like tattling to me and like little kids. I'm trying to watch the show so loud. Okay, well. So I guess it's kind of like, you know, a toddler. If you love yourself enough and that child enough, you can let them scream and you know they're safe and you can let them have the fit. And you can say, I love you, and when you're done, let me know. Because I am grateful for the mind I have. I have a brilliant mind. But it's easy to judge it against the world because when I write a book, I write on the back of bubblegum wrappers. I write on the wall, I write on my arm, I write wherever the thought comes out because I'm not an organized person. I don't even have the first notion of how to organize. I don't.
but that doesn't mean my mind isn't brilliant and it doesn't process things in a really great way. It just isn't the way that looks good on paper, so I've shut it down. But I can't say truthfully that I would trade my mind for someone else's. So whether my mind is a being or not, it just, I think, wants to just be. And when I'm down here, I can do that. I can just let the child run still let the child and it's more likely to bring its video game over and go oh have you ever played this before who knows what it has to offer if I'm just not telling it to shut up and get away from me like we do when we're on the phone I can't hear shut up you wait till I get off this phone can't wait Anyway, that's what wanted to come through. And I think I'll go get ready for today. <laughs>